farmer Dre back at it. We're out here in the strawberry field and we are laying plastic for strawberries. So this is what we're doing here. Moses is out here. We're just putting some extra weight on the discs just so that I won't have the same problem I did last year. And since this has so many other adjustments to it, it, it gets complicated. So whenever I made the raised bed that didn't have anything back here or the, the shanks that are going to go into the ground. And now that we're getting to it, we're using the five foot plastic this year. A lot better firmer raised bed, stronger up down. We got the crown raised bed there so all the water is going to fall off. So uh, just getting it done slowly and surely, one row at a time. So we've been at, out here actually quite some while, a while, but the thing is we gotta go in the store nonstop. We have like a bunch of farm tours today. We already uh, done one this morning and then in another half hour or so we gotta go do another one. So it's just um, that time of year we're super busy. My camera's dirty full of dust here, I'm sorry about that. And uh, it's, just, it's just go time. Like I said, the strawberries will be here pretty quick today. And we got one, two, three, four, six rows done. So we're putting a thousand plants per row. We got 33 rows out here. So planting two acres of strawberries. So as you see here, we're getting really good coverage on the soil, on the plastic there. And it's getting good covering up nicely. We've got a nice firm raised bed, solid. That's six inches tall there. So it's just, everything is going smooth. After about, you know, the first few rows here kind of kind of messed up here because they're not perfect because uh, by the time you adjust everything it takes a while but once everything's dialed in it's just go time so so this year I am actually burying the drip tape about an inch underneath the ground there just so we get better soil water to soil contact there last year I put it up top and I feel I had I had too many holes in it so maybe if I buried a little bit I'm in we're still having a lot of rocks here but it's not too bad or various beds are made nicely covering it up so it's go time. All right, so we're out here at the end row and I gotta find my knife here. I got camera batteries, my ear pods, everything in my pockets, but I got a knife here. Gotta make sure it's at 500 foot here. We're just eyeballing it here, just cutting the plastic. And then I'm gonna give my knife to Moses there. And he's gonna go ahead and cut it. We wanna leave a few feet of drip tape here on the end, just so we can have enough room to tie it off. So solid raised beds here. This machine was well worth the investment. So we got one more row to do here. There's another 500 feet on this row left, on this roll of plastic, and then we're done. Okay, go forward, Ivy. Go forward, we'll adjust it later. Alrighty, so if you guys are interested in know how the auto track system works, so this thing goes down the center of the row there, and if it's it, it goes, it, the row goes that way, it turns the entire machine that way, and then same thing back and forth by these sensors. All you need is a 12 volt battery, and at every single end of the row here, Adrian and I, we like to adjust it. Hey, tell me when it's straight. Perfect. A little more, he says. Because whenever you want to start the row, we don't use it to start the row. And once we get down the row, then we go ahead and turn it on. So if it's not straight to begin with, then you get problems like this right here. This is where we learned. Right there, we made a hole in the plastic because the thing was crooked when he started. So by the time he came here, the disc was seeing that part right there. So a little bit of dirt there will fix that problem. But overall, it's looking, looking real, looking real nice. So. We have to go give a farm tour now, so we can't, um, we'll try to do, get another row in here, but yeah, it's going, going pretty smoothly. It's 
So there went a good hour of uh, talking to people, customers, field trips. It was, uh, I think it was a homeschool group or whatever. It doesn't matter anyways. We uh, back out here. We got Moses, Adrian, and uh, Red Dewar over there doing something. I think we got a new species of birds around here. You guys see that too? A new species of birds? They're, uh, they're out there finding that new species of birds we found. So uh, anyways, we're going to continue out here. The rows look pretty straight, fairly straight. It's not too bad. A nice, firm, firm raised bed. Those plugs will go in here perfectly fine. There's about 30 inches between each row here, maybe a little more. So it'll be ample time. I mean, right after we're done uh, laying all the plastic, I'm gonna come through. I bought some annual ryegrass. I'm gonna come and broadcast it out here with our fertilizer spreader. Just kind of broadcast it. Then we'll come. I'll send Moses out here with the, uh, with our blower. And he's gonna blow all the seeds off the plastic and then we're gonna go ahead and start planting so then once the um, grass starts growing the roots are actually gonna help me out and it's gonna be my favorite because they're gonna grab a hold of that soil and hold it into place so I got to wash the wind and the rain and the whatever it's, it might come the next couple weeks until that rye grass grows the nice thing about rye grass it germinates fairly quickly about 10 days so um, yep Adrian's ready to go Moses dude you're gonna be poking holding my plastic So we got 10 rows down here and on some of these rows I double passed them yesterday to make a firmer raised bed and on the rest of these I just went through here once and uh, if we have that we don't have enough uh, whenever we're laying plastic there's not enough force and energy in the track to, to completely fill it so I think I'm gonna have to come through again here today and reform all these beds make sure they're nice and firm on top and then probably come through later on today and finish off the um, the plastic we got 10 rows here that are complete and uh yeah we will uh have to come through back here through here and make you know make them all firm move all this soil up top here in between there because the drip tape is not covering it's not getting covered and then the auto track system doesn't work well at all if there's an indention in the uh, bed there so i guess uh we'll, we'll see the plants i think are coming in the next hour so we'll see how it turns out alrighty so we were out here working and we got a call that the strawberries are here so uh, I had to reform the beds and it's working out a whole lot better I'm trying to shove more towards that way because I kind of put them a little too close I went six foot centers but whenever I was making the beds uh, yesterday they uh, the the I didn't have the auto track system on so the thing was moving back and forth but anyways strawberries are here we're gonna go ahead and um, jump in the gator and see what we can do Alrighty, so this is a wagon load full of uh, the strawberries here. There's 140 boxes of Chandler's, 25,000 pieces there. So we're going to go ahead and unload these on the pallets here and take them out to the field. Alrighty, so all of the strawberries are here. So we got in uh, 32,000, and I ordered some Albi and some Monterey. Those are going inside the high tunnel, so those are coming in. I told them to ship them out October 1st, so it gives us enough time to get these in the field. So we got uh, 5,000 Rocco, we got uh, 25,000 Chandlers, and these are all Chandlers right somewhere over here, anyways. A lot of Chandlers, 25,000, then we got 2,000 Camarosa. I ordered some Sweet Charlies, but one thing about McNitt growers, they're really good at um, 
you know if they if they're if their crop isn't looking as quality or as great as they want it they're not going to ship them out so i ordered those thousand channelers and then I ordered a thousand Camarosa, so they just gave me those two thousand Camarosas and told me it would be good. So that's why you want to use, that's why we use McNig growers, because they're just a really good, they're family farm. The guy that was here, that's their dad, and uh, they have two boys, Bill and Andy, really good at, you know, doing what they're doing. So we do really do appreciate their business. And I just talked to him, and if you guys want some strawberry plugs, you guys should check them out, McNitt Growers, they're out of Illinois, and I just talked to them a little bit about their shipping and stuff. So you had to buy a minimum of at least 50 plugs from them, that's how much are on trade. And for that, you guys, they had to ship them out, and they said the most expensive thing for that is the freight. The freight costs more than the actual plugs. He told me on average the freight costs about $37 to ship out of a 50 cell count tray. So that's, I mean, you're paying right about a dollar a plug there, plus everything. So I mean, if you, if you guys want for the home gardener, just a few plugs. I mean, check them out. If not, just uh, just come come buy strawberries for me, you know? <laughs> Anyways, we're going to go head back out in the field. Hopefully, we'll get all the plastic laid today and then start planting first thing in the morning. Plant the Roccos first and then the Chandlers and the Camarosas will be last. So, we're just trying to get to it. Go, go, go until we get done. So, now in the, for the next couple of days, there is no stopping. I mean, there's, we got to go 110%. I mean, 32,000 is a lot of plants. So, let's go. So I put Adrian on that with Moses and we have the well drilled. We just don't have it connected. So we're going to go ahead and start planting tomorrow. And when, like I said, we want to run the irrigation on there so the bed could be nice and soft before we plant. So there'd be plenty of moisture in the soil. And it just makes it really easy when you're planting if you have a nice, whenever your bed is super nice and soft and full of water. So we got this tank here. I'm going to bring out our pump and uh, the uh, generator run this. We're just going to run one line here. I might do two lines. It's a 250 gallon thing. So I think 250 gallons will be plenty to irrigate this stuff right here. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and connect this. Let these two lines run here for uh, until this tank's empty. And we'll continue moving on here because once they're irrigated, I mean next week by next week, next week uh, on Wednesday, the container should be here and the pump will be all connected. But until then, the first watering is just gonna be through here. So uh, and then whenever we're planting, we're gonna put. Uh, Fertilizer and water through the uh, water wheel transplanters. So they're gonna have plenty of moisture through there But we just want the bed to be nice and uh, filled with moisture and uh, yep Alrighty, so we are back out here laying plastic all the rows are made nicely. So look how smooth it's going now It's perfect nice firm raised beds. We're not even putting those plows in the ground anymore So it's just going smooth drip irrigation is going underneath there So uh, yeah, it's going nicely smooth 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 Alrighty, so it is the next morning we're out here. We're gonna go ahead and finish off. You guys see that as well? It's 53 degrees right now. It's nice and cold out here. Fall is upon us. But anyways, we're gonna go ahead and finish off laying off the plastic this morning. Once we're done doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and connect our, our small spreader, broadcast that right grass, go through there with a small blower, and then we'll start planting right away, trying to get those uh, plants in the ground there. So, um, you know, let the tractor warm up here. Get the crew. I will send Adrian to go get me a sweater because I'm kind of cold. You know, it's like uh, I'm, not <laughs> I'm not used to this kind of weather here. So uh, we'll see how that turns out. Ah, it's part of it. You know, I had a bottle of cider last night, so I went to sleep pretty late. Woke up early this morning, but you know what? Got to get it done. It's part of the grind. So uh, yeah, we have about halfway more to go here. Like I said, we'll just start. Uh, hopefully, start planting today.
Alrighty, so it's about noon. We got four more rows left and then we're done. But I have Isaac out here. He is spreading the annual rye grass seed. I was gonna do it with a three point with the tractor with the our broadcast spreader. But since we're once we get done with the plastic, we're gonna start planting. And um, we have to do this before we plant before we make any holes in the plastic here. So he's just out here broadcasting with that spreader in his hand there. I don't know if you guys can see that. And then we're gonna come through with the uh, with the backpack blower and blow all the seed off into the middle of the rows here so it can create a nice mat of uh, the um, oh, really? uh, annual right here. So um, yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty dense. I think we're putting about 35 pounds, maybe 50 pounds to the acre. But then again, we gotta, calc we gotta realize that we're not laying it on the plastic here. So it's gonna be a lot more condensed between the rows here, but that's fine. Once we get something growing there, then the seeds will uh, start holding down that fabric a lot better than the plastic and we won't have as much issues as we did last year. And the reason you want to go ahead and lay this down before, uh, spread it before is I mean, once you start making holes in strawberries, if you get the grass there between the strawberry plants, you're, you're done. That's what happened last year. As you guys saw, if you guys could go back and watch my other videos, that's what happened and it was a big mess. We had a rye grass about eight tall be by the end of uh, May there. So hopefully we're still doing stuff a little better this year, but uh, yep, you know, there's a still a good I mean, there's 30 to 45 inches here between each row here. Gives us plenty of time to walk back and forth. And we've got 35, 32 inch beds. So, uh, yeah, this is the spreader here. Isaac, show them how it's done. Oh, so uh, it's just a hand spreader. We've had this to uh, do that here. So it's just, you just crank that sucker there and it just moves it back and forth. Alrighty, so we just got done, or we got done about noon lane plastic and we had a few farm tours. And that just kind of took up our whole afternoon. So we're not going to start planting until tomorrow morning. I'll be going to a farmer's market early. Then one of my sisters is going to come and uh, swap me out. And we got the boys here, Moses, Isaac. So what we're doing is hey, we're laying... Nate G. Yeah, that's right. My bro, my, my cousin bro, Nate G here. So what we're doing is we're laying them all out. So we go ahead and get them watered. So before they go out in the field, so they can have plenty of water so they won't be in any kind of transplant shock so these are all the rocco right here there's five thousand right here the rocco and then we're putting all the channels on this side so the channels will be uh so let's see here five six twelve eighteen feet this is uh five thousand so it's going to fill up this whole entire side in the back wall just the channels alone and we'll fit the camarosas right here and get them watered just enough so that the uh like i said so they don't have any transplant shock the boys are dropping plugs here and uh, get that going, so we'll go ahead and water them nicely. So that's the plan, that's what we're doing right now. Alrighty, so a few hours have passed. I've been really busy. I had to go fix a tractor with my dad. We had a mechanic come out and look at it. But Moses and Isaac have been out here. They've been working away. I mean, these boys are the real deal here. And uh, just look at them going away. They got all these chandlers pretty much done for. Moses oh. kind of upset at me because I uh, left them. But hey, yeah. it is. This is Moses' mad face here. So, <laughs> and then Isaac, him and his pit viper, he don't care about nothing. So we got one more pallet now. done. We got one more pallet in the, uh, the warehouse there. It has a Camarosa and the challenge. I'm going to go ahead and start watering these to get them going. And then that's going to take a long time to get all these watered. But hey, you ain't going to go nowhere if you ain't going to start. So, um, so we're just going to burn these boxes. They're just... And the thing about these, you can't really recycle them because they have a wax coating. And if you try to... Whenever they try pressing them into those bales, there, and then that wax coating just makes them slip. So, uh, yeah, I guess we will have to uh, figure something out. These are all channelers on this side. 
Imagine we gotta plant all these, so <laughs> what have I gotten myself into?